The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did Jesus homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, Please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's Gospel takes us to a Mediterranean seaport called Tyre, a trade route that was well known for pagan and Gentile merchants. It is here that Jesus chose to take a well-deserved respite from his mission. When a Greek Gentile woman came to Jesus, fell at his feet, and begged and begged and begged him to deliver a demon from her daughter. At first, Jesus tried to dismiss her, yet she was so desperate. She shouted, have pity on me, Lord, son of David. Lord, help me. In response, Jesus said, woman as great as your faith, and healed her daughter. I suspect that some of us know this woman's desperation as a personal lived life experience in our own lives. There may also be some of us who believe that our faith is too weak to ask God for a miracle. Surely, if there was anyone who was considered unworthy to ask Jesus for a healing, it would be a non-Jewish Canaanite. Yet Jesus recognized her faith and had pity on her dire situation, prompting Jesus to respond, let it be done as you wish. Seven words that healed her daughter. As we reflect on this holy exchange between Jesus and the Gentile woman, we are reminded that Jesus came to save all people, even those we might consider to be outside the faith of the church. Perhaps the best way to understand today's gospel is for me to share a true story about an outsider from Ireland, a man named David. Back in 1977, David was a well-known soccer player and lead singer in a popular Irish band. At the age of 37, David developed stomach pain. He went to the doctor, and six weeks later, David's weight dropped from 220 pounds to under 100 pounds. Medical tests revealed David had Crohn's disease, a debilitating disease with three main characteristics, chronic stomach pain, constant nausea, and ongoing diarrhea. His doctor told David and his wife, Anne, that it was only a matter of time that they should get their affairs in order. Hearing that news, David's life fell apart that day. No longer able to work, David exhausted the family's savings on medical care. When David's band heard the news, they decided to run a gala event to raise funds to cover David's funeral expenses. Then a rather unexpected event occurred. At the end of the gala, a travel agent approached David and Anne and offered to pay for them to go on a Marian pilgrimage. David bristled at the idea because, in his words, he and God parted ways many years earlier. His wife Anne, a woman of great faith, pleaded with David to go on the pilgrimage with her. Under protest, David said, he would go with Anne under the following conditions. That Anne not pray, there'll be no talk about religion, and David not be required to go to Mass. With that, they packed and arrived at Dublin Airport. When the travel agent again approached David and said, I'd like to introduce you to your spiritual director on this pilgrimage, Father Peter Mary Rookie. 
Now, for those of us who may not be familiar with this priest, Father Rookie was healed from blindness at the age of nine. And in gratitude, he promised God that he would become a priest and serve all people for the rest of his life. David took one glance at the priest and became irate, saying, I don't need or I don't want a spiritual director. Father Rookie tried to shake David's hand. David spewed a number of condescending words, then moved his seat to even void looking at the priest. Hours later, the plane arrived at the destination, and then everyone got into a bus where they met a chaperone who announced, I would like us to all pray the rosary as we begin our pilgrimage. Hearing this announcement, David lost it. He yelled at Anne, saying, he didn't want to pray, he didn't want to talk about religion, and now he has to listen to this woman praying a rosary at him? David's annoyance continued until they arrived. And then the chaperone escorted David to his lodging that included one common bathroom for 15 people. The chaperone then announced it was time to walk to the church to help everyone become acquainted with their surroundings. And with each step, David became more agitated and finally said to Anne, look, this is ridiculous. I'm going back to the house and go to bed. Then tomorrow morning, I'm leaving with or without you. Hearing this ultimatum, Anne became desperate. So she decided to pray the entire night, asking our Blessed Mother to help Anne intercede before her son Jesus, that he would do whatever was necessary to heal David and to help David come back to the church. The next morning, Anne woke David and begged, please come to Mass with me. If you do, I'll agree to go home with you. David scoffed. I haven't been to Mass in years. But okay, if that is what it'll take to make you happy, I'll go. They arrived at the church and sat in an open pew. Anne quietly knelt and prayed as David stared at the floor and counted all the floor tiles in the church. After Mass, David ran out of the church and headed back to the house to pack. Anne caught up with him and pleaded, David, Please come with me because Father Rookie is having a healing service. I promise, if you come with me to this service, I shall not complain any further, and we will go home. Okay, said David, but this is the last straw. They arrived in a large open field as David saw a crowd of over 600 people gathered around Father Rookie. Not sure what to expect, David decided to stand in the back of the crowd just to watch. Father Rookie noticed David and approached him and asked, David, is there something you wish to tell me? David responded, Father, I don't wish to speak with you. I'm in a lot of pain and I only have a few weeks to live. Father Rookie nodded, then placed a black crucifix in David's hand that contained a servite relic. Then Father anointed David and prayed over him. The next thing David recalled, he was laying on the ground with dirt all over his clothing. Sheepishly, David got up, dusted himself off, as he noticed an intense heat that ran from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. Finally returning home, David saw his doctor and reported all that happened. The doctor suggested running some tests. And when the test results came back, David was told there was not a trace of Crohn's disease in his body. My brothers and sisters, David's story is a modern day example of how much Jesus loves each one of us in this world. Not only was David healed of Crohn's disease, but Jesus converted David's heart, giving David a desire to pray and to receive the sacrament of reconciliation and Eucharist, and a profound understanding and gratitude for his wife Anne, unwavering faith, plus the powerful spiritual gifts that are available to each of us through our priests. In gratitude, David quit sports and dedicated the remaining part of his life writing and singing music to praise the unfathomable love of Jesus and the precious gift that God has given us in our Blessed Mother. And so today we have heard two wonderful examples of the healing love that Jesus has for all people, even those we might consider to be an outsider. Pray, God, that we never judge another person as outside the love, mercy, and forgiveness of Jesus because they're not Catholic or don't go to Mass. Rather, 
May we be ever grateful to God for the gift of the sacraments that is our treasure in the church, along with the precious gifts of the Holy Spirit given to us to guide our lives as we witness to everyone we meet God's love and salvation. Truly, that pearl of greatest price made possible through the passion, death, and resurrection of God's only Son, our Lord Jesus Christ.